good to be back home and uh, to be with you. I know that you had uh, some good pulpit supply while I was gone, especially the first Sunday when the Vacation Bible School program went on. And I did watch that, by the way. I got to uh, view it from Brookings. It was kind of fun to see. Everybody looked like they were having fun. Um, but it is good to be home, and I've got a few announcements I want to share with you. Uh, we are accepting rummage sale items in the uh, two Sunday schools in the corner, Sunday school rooms there. Please, if you do bring stuff, get it out to the outside walls and stack it up so we don't end up with a room full with only at one level because we get a lot of stuff. So we appreciate that. We'll be setting up on the 25th for the rummage sale, putting out the tables and doing all that stuff. We'd love to have anybody come and help. It just makes things go a lot easier uh, if we have good help. And with that fireworks stand, we'll be opening up 27th, right, right? Yeah, 27th through the 4th, actually the 5th too, but not officially open, just you can still buy stuff. And the, the hours are a little different this year from 4 to 10 on weekdays, uh, 10 to 10 on Saturday, 8 to 10 on Sunday, and then on the 4th from 10 to 8 or so. So please uh, help out and, and show up for that. We do have, uh, do we need to be for Christian Ed on the, the first Monday? Probably should. We still have some curriculum stuff. I put it in there, I didn't call and ask you. Uh, Christian Ed and Administrative Board on the 6th. So we'll meet here and hopefully all the room and sale stuff is dealt with and they'll have room to meet. Um, and also on the 4th of July, there's a parade on the 4th, and that starts at 11, is that correct? That's what I was, I hope I, I hoped I had taken right notes. Uh, that'll be at 11 downtown, and it's a red, white, and blue theme, and then there's a potluck picnic afterwards at the park, so if you're able, uh, be a part of that. We also have a mission day that's coming up, and Lisa will get you any information you need about times and all that kind of stuff, because they're going to have a house and banquet and all of those things would be a great experience. So uh, I do have a new series starting next Sunday called Questions for God. I'm going to ask some questions that uh, you might have asked about God. I have a little flyer here about like, are, are you for real? Is the Bible true? And do all roads lead to heaven? We'll talk about some of those things over the next uh, six weeks as we go. Also, <clears throat> You have in your bulletin a, an update of what happened at annual conference, just some of the highlights. And uh, maybe if you can run that, we've got a little video that goes along with that and you can kind of see some of the stuff.
serve God's will together. The Harry Denman Evangelism Award. So many of you know your Angela Gibson. Welcome back and welcome to the Board of Day Ministry Report and I'm pleased to call for Adam there. God is moving in the hearts of people of all ages and we are assisting them as they answer God's call. For day ministry or lay ministry, they need you to encourage them and help them to serve. For every sunset, in that exact same moment, somewhere, some other location, the sun is rising. Glory be to God forever. former bishops presiding over the conference, Bishop Owen and uh, Bishop Kesey, and our interim bishop, who was on medical leave, was watching. So we had three bishops involved. I don't know whether that's good or bad, it just was. One of the, uh, one of the not highlights of the annual conference was that our conference treasurer, Jeff Postasol, is retiring from that position and going to become an accounting professor at Dakota Wesleyan. So we will not have his, uh, his humor and his down-to-earth way of putting things. Maybe they'll find somebody like him, but you know what? Pretty rare in an accountant to find somebody that can make things understandable to those of us who numbers are a puzzle and, uh, you know, like a mystery. I don't know how they work. But anyway, um, There'll be more information coming as we have things get finalized and clarified. And uh, one other thing is we do want to have a brief meeting after church for the ad board. Just a couple, one quick thing we need to take a look at on the fence. So if you can just gather in the back quickly, get it done quick, edge out. And also next Sunday, I didn't get it in the bulletin, but there is an open house for Pat and Kay Mallon. 12 to 2 at First Congregational Church in Huron, and uh, I'm sure they would love to see some of their friends from around here. So, mark that down on your busy schedule for next Sunday. Are there other announcements that we need to share today? Okay, before we sing happy birthdays and all that, play the last one. This is, this is the Father's Day gift for all the dads out there. Yes. 
Father's Day to all the fathers, uh, some who are biological fathers and some who are spiritual fathers, because we have a lot of those too. Uh, a lot of the kids in this church have several fathers, and that's a blessing. So, happy Father's Day. Birthdays, anniversaries? Anybody want to admit to? Ellen Kay has a birthday on the 22nd. Ah, 22nd for Ellen Kay. I didn't think she had birthdays anymore. Doesn't look like she does. She just looks the same. Ellen Kay, anybody else come up? And no anniversary, do you have anything like that? Too hot to get married on a day like today. I've done some. All right, well, let's sing a little happy birthday then.
so much that our life, our hope, our strength is all in you. Help us to feel your presence, not just today, but every day, knowing that you, through the Holy Spirit, walk with us everywhere we go, through everything we go through, and you're there. Strengthen and uphold us. Be with us especially today as we worship together, as we sing your praises, as we hear your word read and proclaimed, that we might be in you. Take my life and let it be as our Lord and song.
Think of who the person was that imagined Buzz Lightyear. Somebody imagined him. Somebody made him up. And it's fun. It's fun that he's there, right? Yeah. Yeah, I know there's a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, but somebody invented him. Somebody thought him up. And maybe someday you'll think something like that. Or maybe not, because maybe that's not what you're going to do. But it's a good thing to be able to do that. And it's great that we have people that can think like that. And that's a gift that God gave them. And you know, God has given all of us a gift. We just don't always know what it is. We have two Google right here, too. Yeah. But we don't know what our gift will be. We just know we have one. And someday, someday, we'll find out. Someday I'll find out what my gift is. I don't know. We'll find out. And when we find out, you know what we're supposed to do? We're supposed to use it. Yeah, we're supposed to use it to make God happy, to make God smile. And so maybe it's a light year, maybe it's a new guy that you could invent, maybe it's something completely different. We don't know. But we know God gives us a chance to use the brains that he gave us and the skills and the gifts that he gave us. And that's what we always hope to do, to use the gifts and gifts. Let's pray everybody. Thank you, God, for agreeing and all of our young people. It'll be so exciting to see the gifts that God has given to them and watch them grow and mature. And so, Lord, we thank you for that wonderful opportunity that we have. And we also thank you for the part that we can play in honoring the gifts that they have, helping them to explore them and make them stronger. So, Lord, watch over us, watch over them, and bless us all as we work together in your kingdom. Amen. Amen. Get some candy, okay? Let's see if I know how to do this. You think I know how to do the candy stuff? Yeah, probably. I might, I might figure it out. You never know. And the older who gets the bag. Well, I don't know. I might have to give it somebody during the week, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, take three. Oh no, if, if I can't find anybody, I'll give you a call, okay? okay. I'll call you up and put you in charge. You'll help me out. What a guy. What a guy. <clears throat> so our scripture lesson today is from 1 Kings. And it starts at the beginning of chapter 19 and goes through the first part of verse 15. What we'll be reading today. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. And when he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat under it, and prayed that he might die. I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. At once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and he drank and he lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and he ate and drank, and strengthened by the food he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night, and the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have, have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, put your prophets to the death with the sword, and I'm the only one who's left. And now they're trying to kill me too. The Lord said, go out and stand in the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there came a gentle 
whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out to the, and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I'm the only one who is left, and now they're trying to kill me too. The Lord said, go back the way you came, and go to the desert of Damascus. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. Thanks be to God. In this, uh, this message, I titled it, Sound, Sound of Silence. In one translation of this story, when Elijah goes out after the earthquake and wind and fire, it says, then there was a sound of silence, and he heard God's voice. A sound of silence. But, you know, I think we need um, a little bit of background on this story. You probably remember the story, but Elijah had challenged the prophets of Baal, uh, the god that, that Jezebel, queen of Israel, was pushing. She had 450 prophets that she took care of personally. She fed them at their table, had housing for them, made sure they had everything they needed. And Elijah challenged them. If you remember the story, he, he said, let's get stuff to make an altar, get a couple bulls, and all of you prophets and me, we'll find out who's God is the most powerful. He said, you choose the bull that you want, build an altar, and have it all set for the fire, and second, cut the bull up and put it on there, and then call on your God to light the fire. And so they did. They built their altar, they picked the bull, they butchered it and set it up on the altar to burn, had the wood underneath it to burn, and then they started to call on their God. And they danced around, and they shouted, and they yelled, and they made all kinds of noise, and, and Elijah, of course, stood off to the side and taunted them. He said, well, shout a little louder. Maybe, maybe your God is, is away. Maybe he's on a vacation. In one translation, it says, maybe he's gone to the bathroom. You need to shout a little louder. You need to be a little noisier so that he can hear you. And they shouted louder, and they started to cut themselves to, to show their devotion, and they danced and they danced until the day was almost over in no fire. So Elijah said, everybody, come over here. He says, get those big jars of water. Get those to fill them up. Come over and soak my altar. And so they did. And he put the bowl up there with the wood and they soaked it. And then they went and they soaked it again. And he had dug a trench around his altar. And they soaked it a third time. And the water was so thick that it was actually pooling underneath his altar, like a, like a little lake. Everything was drenched. And he called out and said, show the people who is the true God. And lightning from heaven came and burned up the offering, the water, and the altar. And then, after he kind of gloated a little bit, he uh, got this message from Jezebel and he ran away. I always kind of chuckle because here's a man that has just won a major victory. And what's he do? He retreats. I'm not a military, you know, professional, and I don't know about tactics, but it doesn't seem smart to run away after you win. But he did. And part of the reason he ran away is because he felt like he was the only one left. I'm the only one. That's his cry to God, take my life. I've been zealous for you, but I'm the only one left, and they're trying to kill me, and why? I can't do this, I can't. I'm all alone, I'm all alone. And so he got out into the wilderness, and he found a bush and fell asleep under it, and the angel fed him, and then woke him up again and fed him again, and then said, now you need to keep going, because there's more that you need to do. You need to go to this mountain, very likely the same mountain that Moses went to when he received the Ten Commandments for the second time. And that's where he went. And we have the story of 
all of the things that happened, the crazy, the, the, the wind that tore the mountain apart, the earthquake that broke everything apart, a fire that consumed things, and, and God wasn't in the noisy, loud, crazy stuff. God was in the still, small voice. He was in what's called a, a sheer silence, sound of sheer silence. And so we have Elijah hearing this. And he's still saying the same thing. Lord, I'm the only one. Nobody is caring about me. Nobody is doing anything. I am the only one left. But see, you need to hear the rest of what God told him. He said, go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazael king over at Rome, also in Jehu, the son of Nishma, king of over Israel, and anoint Elijah, the son of Shaphat, from Abel Malteth to be success, your successor as prophet. Jehu will put to death those who escaped the sword of Hazael, and Elisha will put to death any who escaped the sword of Jehu. And then he says, Yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and whose mouths have not kissed him. Elijah thought he was alone. He was out there in the wilderness. He was. I mean, he had just won a, a massive victory, but he felt alone. He didn't feel like he had any hope. He had lost all hope. And in that sheer silence, in that sound of silence, he heard God's word. And these are the things that God told him. There's still 7,000 of you. Now, it's not, that's not like a huge majority in the land of Israel. It's not a big country, but 7,000 isn't a lot of people. It's way more than one. And that's what Elijah thought. I'm it. I'm the last of the last. And there'll be no one like me after this. Not that he was bragging, but he just felt there were no more prophets. No more people loyal to God. He said, no, that's wrong. That's wrong. You are not alone. You are not by yourself. And you know, there are times when I'm sure we feel like that. We feel like, you know, we're the, the last hope of peace to see sometimes. We're the only ones that still understand that sin is sin, and hell is hot, and the devil is still around. And, and we can feel that way, and we can start to, start to just kind of lose hope, because we're it. There's nobody but us. We're just a little group. We're not... We're not a huge mega church. We're not a huge community. We're just us. We're all alone. We can feel discouraged and kind of say, why do we bother? Why do we keep trying? Why don't we just give up? That's what Elijah is doing. Lord, take my life. It's not worth living anymore because I'm the only one and I don't want to be the only one. You know, when I was in Bismarck, I had one evening I didn't have anything to do with it. I ended up seeing a movie I had seen for a long time, The Rise of Skywalker. Any Star Wars nuts out there? Anyway, it's the final, the final episode in the, the whole Star Wars saga. And uh, the Rebellion is a small group of people that are trying to fight against the Emperor who wants everybody to be under his thumb. And one of the characters comments to someone who said, you know, we're just, we're just a small group. And this person says, that's how they meant by making you think you're alone. That's how Jezebel was going to meant by making Elijah think he was all alone. He had already convinced himself and her threat of death just cemented that in his mind. He said, I'm it. I'm all alone. I have no hope, no help. Well, I understand his feeling. You know, you, you can feel like you're out there on your own. And there aren't any other people that are with you. But we're not alone. We are not. And I'm not talking about UFOs and aliens from outer space. I, that, when I wrote that, that was the first thing that came to my head. I said, no, 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 it's not that. We're not alone. Because God is with us. Now, Elijah knew that. 
he had forgotten even that. He had forgotten even that God was with him, that God would protect him, that God would keep him safe, that God would have him do what he needed to do, and until he had finished up the tasks God had for him, he would be still here. He wouldn't be killed by Jezebel or anybody else. Because God is bigger than that. And one of my, my favorite songs in the old the Veggie Tales series, and some of you know Veggie Tales, vegetables that tell stories of the Bible is uh, one of this little guy whose name is Junior Asparagus. He was convinced there were monsters in his room and they couldn't convince him otherwise until they told him about God being with you. And he sings a song called God is Bigger Than the Boogeyman. Well, God is bigger than the boogeyman. And God is bigger than, than Jezebel and her husband, the king, and God is bigger than the prophets of Baal, and God is bigger than all of the, exa the examples of uh, uh, problems that we face, and all of the things that are trying to stop us from doing what we need to do. God is bigger than that, and God is with us. I had a friend that had seen a bumper sticker that said, God is my co-pilot. He said to me, then you need to move, buddy. You're in the wrong seat. God is never our co-pilot. God is our pilot. God is with us. He is our wingman. He is keeping us safe and secure to do the job that he has called us to do, to be the faithful witnesses that he's called us to be. And he is with us. So we're not alone. We don't need to be fearful of anything that stands against us. It doesn't mean we don't need to have respect for the things that stand against us Realize this will be a, a hard battle, this will be difficult, but we don't need to fear those things because those things are nothing in God's sight. But the problem is we don't always feel that presence. We don't always hear God. And I think part of it is because we look for God in the noisy stuff. You know, the words of this world words of the loudest voice, uh, you know, the one who has the most uh, watchers on television or on YouTube or on anything, that's who we listen to because obviously if everybody likes what they're saying, they must be right. And sometimes they're not. We need to listen to God. And this, I, I love this story about so true. God is normally not in the noise. He's not in the, the wind and the earthquake and the, and the fire. God is in that still, small voice. My, my, my life verse is one of those kind of things. In Isaiah 30, 21, it says, listen for a voice behind you. Say, this is the way. Walk in it. Not listen for someone to no, stupid, go that way. No, no, no. Like the guy in the video. Turn left, turn left, turn left. No, there's a voice that will talk. It's not even like face to face, it just comes to you. And, you know, that was before people talked about the Holy Spirit, but that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the paraclete which is a Greek word that means one who comes alongside and supports. The Holy Spirit is not always leading us as much as guiding us and moving us in the right direction and alongside us, maybe even behind us, holding us up. The Holy Spirit doesn't run ahead and say, catch up. The Holy Spirit goes with us at our pace. We need to listen for God in the sound of silence. And to do that, that means that we need to silence ourselves so we can hear that still, small voice, that gentle whisper, that sound of sheer silence, which is the voice of God speaking to you and me
challenge is to listen and trust the voice of God, even when it seems like that's the last thing I want to do. Because God is in it. If God is in it, nothing will stop it. So listen for him in that silence. So as I said, next week we're going to start a series that will run us through most of next month in August uh, called Questions for God. I picked out six of them. Um, and I, my wife said, why didn't you ask people questions? I said, because I probably get hundreds and I don't want to do a hundred part series. I'm just going to do six and I picked the six most commonly asked questions. Uh, I think it was that somebody had searched, you know, Question, if you could ask God a question, just Google it or something. And these are some of the questions that came up. And the first one we're going we're gonna to start with is Are you for real? Is God real? I, I don't know that I will have a definitive answer for you next week. I'll have an answer. I hope that it'll make you think too. Because God never asked us to not think, God just asked us to trust Him. And think. Anyway, that's where we'll start next week. Are you for real? So I hope you can join us either here in person or on our video feed. Thank you all that are a part of that too. Uh, prayer list, prayers, as we respond to God's word in our life. Uh, got some, uh, got one new prayer on there. Many of you probably already know, but uh, Lloyd, Lloyd Knauss has been terminal cancer, and uh, they think it'll be a short time to get on the hospital. So uh, Lynn and, and her family are rallying around, so keep them in prayer. She, I actually gave her the day off. She was supposed to read scripture today, and I said, you, you don't need to worry about that. And even if you get to church, don't worry about it. Uh, but be in prayer for them as they deal with that. And as Dave told me last week, everybody was really interested to find out his dad was a pastor. Because I had inserted that name in the wrong spot. Pastor Teresa got to be Teresa and Pastor Daryl Gunner. But Daryl is, is uh, Dave's dad and he's doing better. So we'll keep praying for him. Uh, pastor Teresa is still on medical leave, but she's doing much, much, much better. She's still a little unstable on her feet and doesn't like going up and down stairs anymore than she asked, which was a challenge at the conference as she was being uh, consecrated and she had to get up on the platform to do that and we went on and come back up and they let her get up there once to stay there and uh, then go down at the end. But uh, she's, she's doing well and thanks, thanks everybody for their prayers. Do we have others we want to lift up?
let's each take a few moments of silent prayers. We did our personal prayers before the Lord this morning. Let us pray. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Today as we gather in your name, we are reminded that you are with us, that you don't abandon or forsake us, that you walk with us through all of the parts of our life, the good and the bad, the beautiful and the ugly, and you're always there. Doesn't mean it will always be easy, doesn't mean it will always be fun, but you'll always so help us to remember that, to glory in that, and to claim that promise as we go through our lives. Help us to remember we're not alone. You're there through your Holy Spirit's power. And we thank you for that. We praise your name. We do lift up the people on our prayer list uh, that we lift up each week. A reminder, too, for uh, Lloyd, whose name has been added as he's healing and doing better and for Pastor Teresa we continue to pray for her and her recovery we lift up prayers for all of those that are dealing with illness and injury and, and all of those kinds of things uh, I, know I just found out today after I had printed this that Riley is going to be needing some surgery on her wrist so we pray for them as they deal with that we pray for families who have lost loved ones and are still mourning that we pray for those that struggle with health issues, mental health and physical health, those who work with them, who advocate for them, who work to heal them or to make them more comfortable. We pray for doctors and nurses and therapists and psychologists and psychiatrists and all of the people who help in the hospital, who work to make life more comfortable, more pleasant. We pray for all that are in hospitals, nursing homes, those are confined to their own homes. We pray for those who are in the armed forces, our emergency workers, law enforcement people, firefighters and EMTs, and the leaders of our world, of our nation, our state, and our city, and the leaders of our church. We also lift up a prayer for the persecuted Christians everywhere and for the people of Ukraine as they continue to be embroiled in the war that is devastating their in all of these things, Lord, we pray your sovereign will be done and your power be seen. That's always our prayer. As we lift before you the words that your son taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This time we continue to respond to God's word in our life with the receiving of the morning tithe and offerings. The ushers will come and wait on us as we make that offer.
what we have we give to you, Lord, for your use. Accept this portion of the many gifts that you have given to us. And bless your people, and bless your church, and bless you. That's our hope in this offering. Amen. Amen. Well, let's uh, close our time of worship together with old Jesus. I have promised.